everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio, and you can see why my YouTube channel is called Messy Table. <laughs> um, I don't even know where to start with this. This is yet another um, idea in miniature bookmaking, but this is about book charms for your books or book charms for your journals. Um, this is a very easy one. I thought in the very beginning, and I found out that um, it's not quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, all right, where do I start? Eee. Okay, so it all started with looking on Etsy and seeing this. This is a sheet of vintage book covers, you know, the outside of the of a book. I bought this and began cutting up strips of paper, folding them in half, and then I hand cut all of these little teeny book covers out. When I say teeny, I mean teeny and then creasing them and folding them and then packing them full of paper. I'll show you this one that I'm working on right now. So you take all the little papers and I put them, you know, they're very, these are very small. Then let's see which one was I working on. Then I take a book and I look at the spine to see about how much paper I need to put in there put them in, kind of close it a little bit, and some of the paper hangs out, which doesn't bother me, but might bother other people. So there we go. All right, then now comes the part that um, I've had to try to educate myself on. Oh, let me show you the finished, what the finished stuff looks like. Let me get this stuff out of the way. This is one in progress. All right, so this is, I think this shows up better on the camera, the dark colors. This is the little book, and yes, it does open, and you can turn the pages. Now, I did a group of these. Did a group of these, and they're so stinking cute. But there's a problem. The problem is, is that I wanted to make them into book charms. And I tried several methods. None of which, well, one didn't bring me the satisfaction I was looking for. A couple of others worked, but let me go get them so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, wait. Yeah, let me go get them. I started to say, I have an example here. Let me go get my first, well, a different example. All right, here we go. So I wanted to make book charms. I made these into little charms. And they are hanging on a little wire S hook that I made myself. All right, so I'm going to show you how I made these into book charms. You know, they're so small. They're just so cute. All right, so the example that I had, let me show you how I did this. All right, so I'll get the others in a second because they all start out the same exact way. It's how they end that they're, it's different. All right, so we have this. And because, oops, because these are not, um, I doubt people are going to put stuff inside them. They fit into the book a little different than other things. And I'm not going to take as much time to to be especially really careful careful with the um, text block all right so this is PVA and I'm going to put some PVA on here and I'm going to put a generous amount of PVA because it needs to go into the pages in between them as small as it is you need to kind of make it soak into the paper this is just coffee dye computer paper that I've had sitting around that were strips that I cut down 
into little tiny pieces. All right, so I did a little bit on both sides. Let me wipe this off because I don't want this to clog up. Then I had some whiter pieces of paper. And all I did was I cut a strip and I put it over, kind of centered it in the middle, wrapped it around so the glue would catch it, tap it on the board to make sure it's kind of got a flat surface, although it does not need to be perfect. And then I just take the bottom and cut it off. You can cut them the same size as your little pieces of paper, but honestly, this might be the easier way to do it because otherwise you'll spend all your time piddly trimming. And seriously, that's not what this is about. <laughs> all right, so there's your little book and it does open, but I don't want to stretch it too far right now because it's wet. All right, so I set this aside and I put just a scrap piece of cardstock over the edge, clamp it down and push it way up into the clip because it, bol it bolsters it up on the inside. I want to make sure that, um, that it dries pretty even. I can see my stuff sticking out the bottom here. Here we go. I put that like that and set it aside. The next part, I kind of had to make up for myself because I couldn't find what I needed to make it a book charm and not screw up the spine, not make it bulgy. So this is what I came up with. I took a ruler and I measured the little book, which is about three quarters of an inch. And three quarters and three quarters is one and a half. So I take just general wire that it's not, I've had this stuff like 15 years, just uh, number two wire. It's just uh, tinned copper. And I measured an inch and a half. So I doubled the, the height of the book to an inch and a half. Then I, I need for it to fold in half to, f to form an arch. Where are my pliers? Oh, here we go. So I took these rounded needle nose pliers that people are for, for jewelry making. I put it on the inside and kind of eyeballed it so I could see that it was in half and bent it in half. And Sometimes it's not perfectly in half and it's okay. Take that out. And then the, the book that I'm going to put this, this paper in, where did I put it? Oh my goodness, I mixed it in with the other stuff. <laughs> okay, there's that. And we need the book part. I guess we'll pick one. I had a little one. What happened to it? Y'all can probably see, but there's so much stuff on my desk, I can't tell if I'm coming or going. All right, so let's try it this way, because this is a little green one. Let's see if this fits in here. The spine is kind of skinny on this one, but I don't know if it's... Yeah, and it's... I'll have to trim a lot off of it. Let me try a different one to see if it works better. Oh, my God. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm still gonna have to. I'll still have to trim some. Okay, so let's do this one. So that's gonna fit fine. The little text block will be okay in there. Put that back on there and let it dry. Let's get this out of the way. All right. So I'm gonna use this one, and I gotta look to see what's the. There's no writing on this one, but it looks like this might be right side up. So I'm gonna take my little bent wire. And I'm going to fit it in here to see if when I close the book it, it's too wide. So I take these pliers and I mash it so it makes it skinnier. So now we're a little we're a little skinny. And I'll take it in here and put it in the book and close the book up a little bit. Perfect. 
and it fell through my hand. Okay, next part is stinky and messy. Not my favorite combination of words. Take a toothpick and some E6000. And the reason I'm using E6000 is because I'm, mail I'm gluing metal. I don't think PVA is going to cover that. So I just squeeze the tiniest amount onto a toothpick. I smooth it out on the spine and make it kind of gloppy. I mean, I, I, you know, I smooth it down this way and then it's a little gloppy. Take my little pen, put it inside the book, Take a look to see if the little, you have to make sure you can have the little eye here stick up because that's what the, um, the that's how you do the charm. All right, so then I take the text block, which I usually let dry a couple hours before I do this part. Then I take more E6000 and kind of smooth it onto the spine right here might need just a tad more. Kind of put it on there a little bit better. I want to make it so it's kind of thick because it needs to stay. Then I take the text block. I stick it inside here on top of the little pin that I created. And sometimes my text block is too short for the book so I want to make sure that I push the text block up so if I trim I can trim from the bottom because trimming up here around this pin is too hard and it makes it look kind of sloppy so I make sure that I push it up so it's kind of even with the top here then I put my paper back on it clip it on again and E6000 takes a while to dry. So usually what I do is I do 15 or 20 of these at a time and I let them dry. Excuse me, I let them dry overnight because E6000 takes a little while to dry. After it's dried, I take this off. Take a ruler. And I line it up with the edge of the little book. And I do the trim job. I want to make it as straight as I can. Not all of them turn out straight. And really, it's just a cute little charm. It doesn't have to be perfect. I trim it up so it looks better. Then I flip it over. And I can see that I have more book than I do. Um, I like the depth on it is too deep with the text block and you can see that there's text block there and I need to cut away a little this little bit so I just take the scissors and trim away some of the book and there it is right there well I didn't have any um, jump rings that would be small enough so I ordered this jump ring giddy up off of Amazon and I was so surprised I got this in there and I got this in there and then I got the this ring in there and what you do is you put this on your finger and you hold the jump ring in the slots there's a larger slot and a smaller slot I did not find this comfortable I will learn how to use it um, I didn't need these I'm more comfortable using the um, pliers so that's what I use when I go to put stuff on so I take the little jump ring and I look for the and, and these are a beast to see I mean it's it's hard to see these I do have a jeweler's headset but I think I can do it without with these you just take them you never pull them open this way you twist them so one hand goes right one goes left Open it up a tad. You slip it through there. And then you close her up. And you should hear a little snap. 
and I give it an extra little nudge just to be sure. Oh, and there. Is a little book charm. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these for the time being, but I'm just putting them on the little hook and then I hang them up until I can figure out what to do with them. I have a chain, a box of chains that are called, one of these calls necklace, necklace chains that I ordered from Amazon and I'm not happy about. They're wonderful, but they're not exactly good for what I'm doing. So inside this little box you get a bag and inside the bag there's a whole bunch of these little tiny silver, sterling silver looking necklaces and the chain is so micro small that's when I need to put on the jeweler's headset because I can't see how to put it through there. So I've been putting, I've been cutting this apart See, I can't even get the bag open. This is how bad it is. <laughs> so, we're just not going to screw around. We're just going to do this. <laughs> I don't have time. So there's the little necklace. And this, this chain is so super duper tiny. All the little links on it. So I take this. And this is the lobster claw. And then I just take these. And I'm just doing on this one because the claw's already included and I don't have to fool around with it. Then I have to put on the headset so I can see. I take it and um, I get another little ring. Then I attach it to here. And then there's a little charm for you to put onto your your books. Your, your the spines of your books. Let me go get the other stuff so you can see. Okay, so I had these hanging up over there. I forgot I hadn't put chain on these. So what I do after this, when I told you that I put the claw on it, this is what they look like. So you can clip them on a chain or clip them into um, not these. You can, well, shoot. You can clip the little books into something else. Okay, so some of these are the next ones I want to talk about because they did not go well. <laughs> I've been piddling around with this for a week now and it's kind of making me a little bit crazy. So after I put the claw on it, let me, let me talk to you about before. All right, so you know, see how I had all these where I hadn't done anything to them? They're just the little books that open. After I made them, I thought, well, how am I going to make them a charm? I've missed the opportunity to put the little pin in there. And how am I going to hang them off of something? So I thought, okay, I can do this. This is my first one. I took a larger size book and ye old Dremel tool and all my little bitty bits and I drilled a hole completely through this book from one side to the other on the spine, well close to the spine. Now this book is sealed shut, it's not going to open. Besides that it won't open very well because it has the eyelet in it. These eyelets are super duper small. Where's the eyelets? Oh, see this is what, oh here, right here. I have colored eyelets and then I have this little pack and I think this might have come from Amazon because I've seen this on Amazon. But the, I don't know if you call it a neck or a stem or whatever it is for the eyelet is not long enough for this book. So what I did was I took the eyelet and I put the eyelet in here with E6000 around the edge and put it in the book. And then I realized, oh, 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 this is not good because it's not going to fit. So I flipped it over, took a second eyelet with E6000 and banged it into the back. Now, since this is not going to open, it doesn't matter. It doesn't go all the way through. No big deal. That's fine. I don't, I don't care 
I don't care about that. Then I decide, okay, great, this turned out fine, considering I'm going to try it with the little books. So then I took the little books and I drilled a hole. I put a black eyelet in there. Problem is, this book is too skinny for the eyelets, so you can only get one eyelet in, but you can't get another one through the back side because the stems of the eyelets bump each other, and then the top part of the back pops out, sticks out. So that was a bust. So it looks good on the front with the eyelet in the corner, but then you have the raw book with the hole in the back. Not the ideal charm to want to sell, you can give them away and explain to people, this is my experiment and, you know, you're my guinea pig. But if you want to sell these, you can't because it's not finished on the back and it looks amateurish. So I tried this a couple times. Here's another one I did in white. And then the back side is just the book. I banged and hammered and pulled eyelets out. Here is one where I drilled through the book with no eyelets. So it's through the raw paper on the front and the back. There's nothing. So if this pulls too many times, I'm afraid that it will rip the book. I think I drilled the hole a little too close to the spine here. But, you know, it was my first experiment with this. Okay, so what's next? <laughs> so the next part will be to throw on the headset, take this along with a smaller jump ring, thread it through these itty bitty tiny weeny little circles, chains, and put it on here so this can hang like this. And then you can use the claw to put it on anything. Or uh, the part that I, I was excited about is that I have the claw and I thought, well, this is great. This, you know, people can clip it onto their rings, and this, this, this will be really good. Problem is, this silly claw is too large for this chain. When I ordered this, I did not realize this, but you have five different sides of O-rings in like the surgical steel stuff, and then this is the fake silver. But in the end, it comes with a little tiny claw compared to, where is it? This one right here. It's a noticeable difference between the two. So this one would be better to put it into little chains, but I've decided that I don't like working with this itty bitty chain. Now I have a box full of plastic bags full of itty bitty chains that I don't Think I'm going to use. So the next <laughs> the next thing to do would be to go to um, a craft store and look for a different kind of chain to put in the books to to want to attach to the lobster claw and the um, jump ring because the these. This stuff is so tiny, I can't get anything through there. Not to mention the fact that another um, uh, one of these claws is not going to go through those little tiny holes. The only place it'll go through will be this top thing here. And that's a connector between the chain and the claw. It's not meant to really hang stuff off of except for these small little um, rings right here at the top and the bottom. So this, I wasted my money on this, and so I will probably cut this stuff off and salvage the claws so people can use them for a charm. And the rest of it I will donate someplace else because this is not going to work. Um, so this has been a trial and error on how to make book charms. I have watched a million videos and I've seen methods that other people have used to make the book charms. Some of them I really like, others not so much. 
so let me show you um, some of the others that I've made that were successful to a certain point. All right, I clean up a little spot. All right, so I have another S hook. I'm, I made a bunch of larger size books, which there will be a video about these, or there will already be one by the time you see this. And I attach the chains in here like I saw someone else do in the video. And there's this itty bitty chain and there's the, um, the claw. So I made when I did this, the, what I started out was, was just being interested in the little miniature books. These do not open. Although the pages are done the same way I did the little teeny tiny one, they're all done the same. They could have opened, but I chose for them not to open. So I made all of these to try out my theory. And I thought it was okay, but I really didn't like the way that, I didn't like the tiny chain. It's just too small to see. I, I can't see that. So I thought, well, let's try another method. Because what happens is when you put the chain flat back up against the the spine of the book, it push it pushes the book text out, and then you have to trim the paper because the paper hangs outside the book. I did not like the way that looked. That was not my original intent, and it was a consequence of putting the chain inside the spine like this up the back. So I ended up putting it to the side in the crease where the fold is right here. So that's where that chain is. It's right there inside the book in the divot because this is a three-piece book. There's the two, the front, the back, and the center, the spine. So I did it in the crease in here. It's fine, but I don't know. It just doesn't, it, I, it's fine. All right, so then I thought, okay, I'm really not sure I like that method or not. So the next thing was to take the book, this opens the book block, text block, and I took a piece of red cardstock to match the outside here. I cut it in a strip um, almost the same length as the spine, poked a hole in it, and put a, um, a, one of those little, one of these little teeny silver um, eyelets in it and then put the jump ring in it and did it this way. I don't think it's going to pull out, but I think it eventually the paper will wear out and it will pull off. But it was another method to make it look even when it, you know, it looks even when it hangs. It's right up the middle. It's not tilted to the side. And then maybe the only person that bothers is me that it's tilted on the side. I think I could probably do the same wired way charm on these that I did on these little bitty ones. Is take the wire, bend it in half, glue it in there, and then push the text block up against it so that it will be more centered like this one is. So, if you guys wonder what it is I do all day, <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> this is what I do all day. <laughs> I have been playing with books and trying to figure it out. I've watched a million tiny book videos. I watched two this morning and I learned a new technique that I'm going to try on the cover of the book. And then, um, did she make it a charm? I'm trying to remember. No, it was a book, but I think I could make it a charm by adapting some of the techniques that I've used on these in her book construction because her book was a three-piece book but I think that I can do it as a charm and it this is okay let's do this we start out with this size book then I went up to the long skinny one I have two of these yeah here we go here's the other one I start out with the little one and a half by or one and a half by one and a half or one by one, whatever these are, I can't remember. Then I thought, well, let's do some skinny ones for the people who do the traveler's journals. 
and then it just <laughs> went downhill. Wait, let me use a blue one. Went downhill from there. <laughs> it's just, if you could see my whole table, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just a mess. Um, so to contain my mess, what I would do is I would put all the ingredients I needed for the books and things inside here with the strips of paper, because I start out using white paper. I made this one here, thinking that I could make it a, a charm, and I decided not to. So here it, oh, see, and it cracks. So here's this. And then I have text blocks already out. And then I started out with big fat chain that I can't use because it's too bulky. And here are the jump rings that go with it. And then I had some homemade, handmade um, figure eights to use to connect stuff. Ended up not using those. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy in here. Here's more of these things bent. Oh yeah, and here's, here's more for a smaller book. So this is what I do during the day. So if you guys wonder why there's not videos as often, you know, every every Tuesday, it's because I'm knee deep in this, and I'm more interested in this than I am in editing my videos. I'm sorry, but you know, I kind of I I want to do this and then do the video about it. But this is not gone the way I thought it would. <laughs> so, so it's a little weird. It's um, a work in progress. So that's it for me. Uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. I will try to remember to link some of the videos I watched for this down below, but if I don't, please remind me in the comments and then I will go look for the videos. I hope you guys learned something today. I mean, I hope you got inspired to try to do something new. I mean, that's what this is all about, is exploring creativity and, um, you know, finding out what turns you on. I mean, what, what makes you happy? But right now, for me, the rabbit hole is miniature books. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you when I have a solution. Bye-bye.